Hello and welcome back to this lesson dedicated to emergency plans for cultural institutions. In this part, we will address the functions, objectives and benefits of creating an emergency plan for the rescue of cultural heritage. Never before uh, have the environmental transformations caused by climate change threatened tangible cultural heritage. Earthquakes, landslides, floods, storms and extreme climatic conditions threaten the ability of the historical artistic collections to resist over time. Our task is to allow the evolution of our collective identity. To achieve this goal, it is essential to keep track of our memory, preserving all those testimonies that are the result of the progress of our society. Museums, archives, libraries, galleries are the guardians of a large part of our cultural and historical heritage. And for this reason, we must be able to protect them from the risks that threaten them. To introduce the concept of this section, I will use some concepts that were addressed in the publication Building an Emergency Plan, produced by the Getty Conservation Institute in 1999. Although it is not very recent, it is a very complete pub publication and will help us to address some of the uh, fundamental concepts of this subject. So let's start with a basic concept. Um, writing a plan for cultural heritage should not be perceived as a point of arrival, but as a constant updating and training process. In a circumstance like uh, today's, where risks multiply and the natural environment changes suddenly, it is essential to be able to modify one's knowledge assets and move towards the constant renewal of one's emergency response capabilities. Entering this specific sector of the risk, manager, uh, of the risk management for cultural heritage, one realizes that no matter how much one is committed and works with precision, an emergency plan will never be definitive. This is because a museum, an archive, a library, a gallery is a living being that changes and transforms continuously. So it is basically impossible to freeze a specific situation of an institution on an emergency plan. So this leads us to emphasize the importance of constant review and updating of this document, as we will see in the next slides. So to sum up, we can say that emergency management should be conceived as a process. For this reason, it is good to make the process of planning, assessment and review of the emergency plan part of a regular routine. And this particular um, goal can only be achieved if a vision oriented towards emergency management is applied to every day-to-day -day management of the museum and the collection. Once you understand the elements that in some way can influence the risk and the capability of reacting to an emergency, it will be easier to understand what small improvements can be implemented on a daily basis to improve the ability to deal with an emergency. So in this slide, you can see some of the basic requirements that must be implemented for effective programming. First of all, a long-term commitment. As we have seen in the previous slides, the creation of an emergency plan is only the starting point for an emergency planning and management process. 
stopping at uh, the first version of an emergency plan um, is not enough and um, it is necessary to be able to dedicate annual moments to review and update the plan to adapt it to the transformations that may have taken place inside the museum. Then another important ingredient is patience. The result of an emergency plan will not be seen in the short term and in reality one hopes that he never sees them because this would mean running into an emergency. So for this reason, it is necessary to be able to activate, let's say, a peripheral vision capable of grasping, uh, grasping the profound reasons uh, why a job of this type is carried out. And to do this, to do this it can significantly help to organize periodic emergency um, exercises because seeing the museum's reaction capacity in practice, thanks to the use of the emergency plan, can be an excellent example of the process of the work and allows you to see the results more or less concretely. It is essential for efficient planning that everyone works together in sharing and collaboration of the work drafting, implementing, reviewing and updating an emergency plan is a job that involves all the professionals of an institution. Everyone, everyone should be involved as they can bring a specific vision and propose improvements and actions to be applied for to their specific work sector. Finally, it is essential to dedicate an annual budget to contingency planning. In this regard, it is good to um, underline two important aspects and concepts. The first one is that mitigation actions are often perceived as very expensive, uh, since one always thinks of large structural interventions or uh, the purchase of technological devices and so on. But in reality, there are many, many small activities that can, um, that require a very low use of resources and which um, often have an important impact on risk mitigation. Another important concept is that even if risk prevention and mitigation require investments, these will always, always be less substantial than the investments that would be needed to manage an emergency without planning. In this slide, you can see some of the benefits that could be identified through the emergency preparedness and response process. These are, for example, a greater potential for protecting human lives and properties, a greater safety awareness and preservation of assets, education and heightened staff awareness on professional and personal levels, leading to employee empowerment and higher staff morale, Obviously, I don't add security of both the museum, and the personnel and the collection. Higher ratings um, for risk management insurance, which can, which can lower premium costs. Increased community recognition and outreach, including increased volunteer participation. Greater community support such as fundraising for capital improvements, collaboration and stronger relationships with peers and other institutions, two-way exchanges of information with the media resulting in more accurate reporting and fulfillment of fiduciary responsibilities for board members, directors and staff. 
Now we will uh, try to identify all the functions of the emergency plan, even if it is always only related to the emergency response phase. Actually, the emergency plan is a document that covers four different protection measures. First of all, prevention. Prevention refers to all of those activities that are aimed at eliminate hazards or reduce their potential effects on staff and visitors, on the collection and all, on all the assets of the museum. You cannot uh, prevent a natural disaster, but you can drastically reduce its effects on human life and properties. You can also take on a major role in safety and prevention efforts to eliminate the more common threats of fire caused by poor wiring or old plumbing and damage caused through lack of supervision during renovation works. The second uh, aspect is preparedness. Preparedness means all the activities that are related to preparing and equipping personnel to handle an emergency. The emergency management tools can be both concrete, therefore, for example, PPEs and materials necessary for dismantling and packing the artworks, but could also mean conceptual tools. So linked to the training of everyone uh, on the procedures to be implemented for each scenario. The third aspect is response. And response refers to all those activities that are specifically aimed at preventing injury and limiting, limiting losses after the event. For example, train staff and volunteers to evacuate visitors, colleagues, collection and records safely. The last aspect is recovery. So preparing and training staff to carry out the process that returns operations to normal. For example, following a disaster, staff and volunteers may spend months sorting through the gift store inventory and discarding damaged items or sorting through the collection and carry out basic washing or surface cleaning tasks and so on. In this regard, it is also important to establish the procedures to be implemented after the end of an emergency. Activities that are often perceived as less important, but which can really help a museum to return to a normal situation. Furthermore, it is important to reflect on what it means for a museum to return to a normal situation after the end of an emergency. Certainly, um, normality after an emergency will never be the same as normality before the event. In this last slide, we will um, look at some of the uh, fundamental elements that um, an emergency plan should have to be effective. First of all, it needs to be actively supported by the director, the governing body and all levels of staff. Secondly, it should be simple, focusing mainly on situations that are most likely to occur. Thirdly, it should be flexible enough to accommodate um, unanticipated situations. Then it should be realistic in its assessment of the museum resources. And lastly, uh, it should be tested regularly and at least annually with an emergency um, exercise and briefing. So that's it for the second part of this lesson. Thank you very much for your attention and we will see you in part three.